Welcome to the cookup episode one. This is a series I'm going to be doing. So if you like this type of content, feel free to come back and support in future episodes. Let's get right into the beat. So for today, I was kind of thinking something around 142. I like that BPM, especially for like trap beats, drill beats. I think it's a good BPM. So let's get right into it. I think I'm going to start off with a guitar. I wanted to start with a guitar first, so. Let's go, let's add our Ample M guitar right here. This is my favorite guitar VST plugin. And let's just find one that's finger. Let's do I really like this I really like the sound of this one. And before we do anything else, what I'm going to do is change the effects. So let's just mute these effects. And then now we can sort of do what we want. This is, hold on, this is kind of bugging me. Maybe it's in here. I just want to auto collapse everything. There we go. All right, so let's come up with the melody. First, I gotta think of what kind of scale I want. So for that, I think what I'm gonna do is probably go into like a G minor. I like the G minor scale. And so I think what I'm going to do, uh, hold on, let me find the chord for G minor. Music theory isn't my greatest strength. All right, so we got the chords pulled up for the scale of G minor. And so there's a special way I learned to make guitar chords. I just gotta remember the notes on a guitar. So the notes on the guitar start with E. So it goes E, A, D, G, B, E. So what I'm gonna, going to go do is open up my guitar in the piano roll and then starts with E. So I'm gonna start right here with E and then we'll just make it a bar for now and then it goes up to A then D. So, and this, I'll explain why I'm doing this in a second. And then G. B. And then we'll bring that down an octave. And then what we'll do is we'll take this, bring it right there. So now that we know we've got the chords, like we have to figure out the progression. But I think for the progression, what I'm going to do is just a simple, like, it's a minor. So maybe like a. One five four. So, the one chord in G minor is G A sharp and D. So, the first note here is the, and you basically want to drag these notes over to where it would be. So the first note is G for the minor. So you take the E and you bring it to G, and then you go well the next is A sharp. So you take the A and you bring that up to A sharp. And then the next thing in the chord would be D. So you take the D, bring it over to D. And then because this is G, you bring it over to G. And now because this is B, and you can't go down to A sharp, you'd have to bring this one up to D. So this B would go all the way over here and go up to D. And then this E would go up to G because that's the next one in the thing. So you just want to match the chords to the next one in the chord. And then you get something like this. And that's the G minor chord. So we're going to do this for the five chord and the four chord. So the five chord is D minor, so D, F, and A. So you start with the E and you go up to F. And then you take the A, go to A. You take the D, go to D. You take the G and G goes up to A. And then you take the B, B goes to D. 
and then the E goes to F. And then I think what I'm going to do is go one five four and then one. So the four chord is C minor, so C E D sharp and G. So that would be Uh oh. This one got taken down. I mean up an octave. I mean up a a half stuff, so we'll bring it back. So the E will go up to G, because that's the closest, and then we need C and D sharp, so A goes to C, D goes to um, D sharp, G goes to G, B goes to C, and E will go to G, and then we can do now is take this and keep that as the same way the one chord was and now we've got our little four chord chord progression that sounds like this and I think what we can do too is make this strummed just so it sounds, so we don't have to strum it in the piano roll. Only thing I think I want to change is bringing it up an octave, maybe. And now we can sort of like make a melody off of that. So I kind of want to only make a melody using sort of the notes we have here. But I definitely think like I want the melody to be within the chords. Like within the guitar. So have the guitar play the chords and play like a little melody on top of that. So I might like shorten some of these top chords and uh, make something out of that. Let's turn the snap first to a step though. I don't like how it's like so high. I might want to make it like within the chords itself because and then like go down two and then it would be like A sharp. I like that. I actually kind of like that. It's got a nice little like bounce to it. And then for this one, what we do, we put it in here. We go something like that and then start with the F, go to the D and then it would be A. And then I think for this one, I already know what I want to do. I kind of want it to repeat just this part. So we'll make this happen for this. So we'll go three. And then the next would be C and then D sharp. So we're just pulling notes from the chords we already have to make this. So for this one, the next one under was D. And for this one, the next one under was D. But for this one, there was no... D sharp here so what I think I'm going to do is go to C here and instead of having it like go perfectly downwards like this I'm going to sort of have it go down and up to give it a different flavor from the first two and sort of spice it up let's see how it sounds though I actually kind of like that so since C is the second one, what we'll do here then we'll just have that carry out. Cuz 
it feels like it comes like it goes down and then it comes back up into this and so for this one what we'll do is we'll just do what we did for the first one but instead of having the exact same like scale down here we'll just copy this over so it like repeats at the end of the fourth bar Yeah, I actually really like that. I actually really like that, so let's just send this to Mixer Track 5. And then we'll go to our Mixer channel. And we'll just rename this Guitar. And then we'll actually color it like, I don't know. kind of want it to be like a nice orange color we'll go with like that color that works so now we know that that's a guitar and now let's add some drum samples I definitely don't want anything that's like like obviously I want the drum samples to be hard but not like aggressive more like crisp crisp drum samples so let's see what we got for snares I like this one, but I don't like the reverb on it. I actually really like this one, so let's add it there. Let's find a kick. All of these have too much sub for me. This one feels good though. So we'll go with that. We'll go with that for a hat. And then let's sort of like make a little loop. So let's let's listen to the let's put this pattern first off just in here in the playlist and let's add our drum I might put the drums separately so like build out the snares build out the kicks build the highest and separate patterns but we'll see I actually kind of like that it's a bit delayed but we'll quantize it once we record it so let's go into Brianna Roll Let's do notes and automation. Uh oh. I accidentally put it down an octave. So let's let's go back. Let's redo that. Is it on a loop or something? Oh, I don't know why. Because we didn't. Let's just drag that out. Maybe that's the reason. All right, let's try again. Now let's take all of those. Let's go to tools, just quick quantize it, and then drag it back over, and now it should sound like this. still sounds off like for some reason so 
this is supposed to be here. Like that. Something like that. And I think what I want to do is just press Alt and drag them the slightest bit off grid. So now it feels like it fits more with the slight delay of the guitar because the guitar is kind of being strummed. I guess what we could do is is put them um, put them perfectly onto the grid again. And then let's go into the guitar and we can just change it to be picked and we'll see how that sort of changes. Actually, that might be better. I still think these need to be just dragged slightly off the grid. So let's put this step to none and let's shift and let's just barely. So now we can drag this back here and copy that over. I definitely think I preferred the guitar though in the strummed mode. Unless you want it to be in the pick mode. I guess we could try it in the pick mode like it is, but then just go here and strum it out just a little bit. But I really don't want too much time delay on it no actually I think I think it's just better uh, I think it's just better off if we just use the strum library like this and let's make sure our effects are turned off still Now let's add hi-hats. So I think for the hats, I kind of want to keep a very simple pattern like this. And then we'll add some fills in where we want or where we need. So let's make this to a step again. And then let's make this step like a third step. Or let's, I mean a third beat, right? Now how do I want this? Half step, I think it's a half step. Yeah. I like that better. And now what we'll do with this is we'll take it just slightly off grid too. So let's turn our snap to none again. But then I don't like this being here. I maybe want it like here. Trying to find exactly where I want it. I think what I want to do is put it perfectly on grid first, right there, and then go to none.
think that's fine. Now we can add our kick in. And I think for the kick, I kind of want it to be pretty simple. It's like. Something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll record something in. So something like that. And then we'll go here. We'll quantize. So everything's just snapped to the grid again. And then we'll quantize the start times. We'll drag everything so it's perfectly in line with the grid. And this needs to be here. So let's put it to step. I think this is supposed to be here. Yeah. And then for these, we can just slightly remove them off the grid again. <laughs> I think that's pretty good for kicks. So now I think what I want to do is add an 808. So let's go. 808. I want one, but I want it to be like smooth. I actually kind of like this one. So let's go into the piano roll with our 808. First, before we even do that, let's edit in Edison and let's just find the pitch of this 808. So the pitch of this 808 is C2. So we're currently in G minor, so what we're going to do is we've made the root note C, and so whatever we do, we'll just make it in the key of C, and then we'll drag it down to G minor to fit our thing. So I think I'm just going to pop in some MIDI. I got some nice 808 MIDI, and we can tweak it. I don't like this one. I don't like how it jumps like that. Hold on, let's edit. Let's click off so we don't have to select all. And let's turn this back to step. And then if it's going to go up like that, let's just drag. I like dragging my notes out. And I kind of want them to stay for the whole time. I guess what we'll do is we won't have, we'll have like just a little bit of space in between the long ones. So it's less drawn out. And that just gives the beat some room to breathe because you don't want 808 the entire, entire time. 
I think something like this works. And then let's make sure that this is on cut itself. See, I like how it skips here, but i rather it just drag out. And now what we can do is we can bring this to G-sharp and just adjust the notes as necessary. So it's actually G minor, so what we want to do is bring this to G and then... And we're just going to find all the notes in G minor and then we'll drag the notes of the the thing to match it so G A A sharp so A A sharp G F everything should be pretty good and then there's D sharp and D and then there's D and also D sharp so perfect Now let's add that. Let's just hear it with the drums. I kind of like it. Now let's hear it with just a guitar. So I don't actually like this pause now that I think about it, but I think what I'm going to do first and foremost to just fix it and just make the beat sound better is start mixing things just slightly. So I'm going to add an EQ to the guitar and it's a very simple EQ, but I'm just gonna make a low pass filter and block out all this low end. So it gives room for the 808 to come through. And we don't really have a lot of bass frequencies in our guitar, so just cutting them out completely will help a lot. Now the pause doesn't feel so awkward. Now I think what I want to do to this guitar is spruce it up, just add a little bit of flavor to it. So I think what I want to do is actually, we'll delete this for now. I want to load up my guitar preset and then tweak it from there. So let's go perfect wait this ain't the one this is the one here we go and now let's take off the pan man because we don't we're not panning the guitar this time we usually like to have it pan so let's do something like this we can take this out even further to about 250 and instead of a decapitator, because it applies too much distortion, what I've been liking to, you know, boost sort of the saturation and the sound volume just a little bit is a radiator. So I'll slap this on. We'll put two to the treble and then we'll put one to the output and we'll take one away from the bass just to get rid of those bass frequencies a little bit, but brighten up the sound. And then I kind of want to take this filter and pull it back to like 30%. So I think that's all I want to do for that. Now for the kicks, I really like it, but what I'm going to do is add a sausage fattener just to beef up the kick just a little more uh, so it can cut through. And then we're just going to taper down some of that high end because I don't want too much high end on my kick. So we're just going to make it... Uh, low pass and we're going to order steep 8 and then we're just going to change the uh, bandwidth and we're going to cut it around like 6k 
So now it's taking out some of that unnecessary high end. And then I think what I want to do is create uh, a drum bus where we send our drums to. So let's just rename this guitar and we'll color it, color it again. And we'll just do something like like that. And then let's go to our drum bus. It doesn't matter. We'll just color it like dark slate blue. And then what I want to add to this is, uh, where is it? Uh, it's a compressor, but I think I want to go with the Rough Rider 3. And then all we're going to add to it is the, the parallel. And then we're just going to turn the makeup gain down to like 4, because I want it to be there, but it doesn't need to be too strong. So let's start naming our tracks. So we get the kick here. This is where our kick's going to be. We'll make the kick green. Colors don't really matter as long as they're different. And then we've got our snare on track four, so let's rename this. Then we can make this like olive, and then hi hats on three. And then we'll color this one like white sea green. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to take this. And we're going to route it to that track, and then we're going to route the kick here. And then we're even going to route the hi-hats here. And now what we're going to do is create send tracks. So I can adjust how much I want the drums to be affected by the compression. So let's go to Fruity Send. And then we'll click Drum Bus. So now we get the snare set up. Let's do it for the hi-hats too. And let's go Drum Bus. And let's go to Kick. And let's go Send. Let's go drum bus. So now they're all linked to this Rough Rider 3. So we already did something, you know, a little bit of EQ and Sausage Fender there. I think the compression is going to be enough for this snare. So I'm just going to add some EQ. I usually like to boost the low mids, then somewhere a little bit in the high mids, but just ever so slightly. And so let's sort of see where we're at with our drums. I think I don't like this this high boost. I actually might want to cut. So let's make a sweeper and then just kind of find out what frequencies we don't like. I kind of like that 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 low end on the snare or low mid. It just makes it beefier and I think what I'm gonna do at least for the snares is I might add a um, a panks to it but I'm gonna panks first and then EQ and what this does is it just messes with the transients of the snare so I can sort of make it really snap which I think is kind of what I want so let's snappy snare I kind of like that better. And the one thing that I like to do to just add the final finishing touch to my snares, which most people, some people do, some people don't do, but I feel like most people don't do it, but I actually like adding the tiniest bit of reverb. I think reverb helps a lot. So let's add Oral River. And then let's go and do our little room. And then we take the little room preset down to like 20% because we don't want it too much, but I think this helps. Now let's go to our 808. Let's make this 808. And I think this is the most crucial step or when you're thinking about your 808s and your kicks and getting them to mix. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a limiter. And this is very important. So let's go fruity limiter. And I have a preset already for sidechain. But I'm going to sidechain my kick to my 808. So that means that every time my kick and 808 hit, it lowers the volume of the 808 ever so slightly so the kick can cut through so your kicks and 808s don't sound like they're clashing. And it's a great way to make like hard hitting beats. So when your kick and 808 hit together, the 808 slightly drops a bit so the kick has room to hit. And you can easily see the difference. I'll show you with and without. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to my 808 and I'll take off the limiter and I'll just solo out the kicks in the 808 so you can hear the difference. Um, all right, here we go. So, you know, it's it sounds a little muddy, but when you add the side chain, you can notice how the kick is cutting through the bass. Now, one thing I forgot to do for the 808 is I like to turn down the attack, turn up the hold, turn on the K sustain release. So the length you play the beat, the length you play your 808 is for how long it holds for, and then it stops. And that's why you have cut itself enabled. So every time you play like a note on your 808, like G4, and you play it and it ends here, it stops the playing of that note and goes right to this one. So it's good if you're like making slides, but it also just makes it so like, there's no overlap because then it would sound really muddy if this was still playing and this one started playing. So it's essential. Now I think a, the reverb's not really doing anything for me on this snare really so I'm gonna take it off and the snare is not doing too much for me either I need something that's like just a bit harder but I don't want it to have too much reverb maybe something like this even though it is a bit verby Let's hear it with the guitar and let's see how it all sounds together so far. I think everything's fine but this snare. Let's try this one. And I need to find the right preset in Panks. Maybe I just need it to be like clean and controlled. Or, hmm. No, that's a bit too much. I kind of want something simple. Like a, um,. Kind of like this, but just with the right snare. Let's try this one again. kind of like this one too so what I'm gonna do is actually layer snares because I want this one to be the main sound but I want this one to provide more oomph to the snare under it so we'll just go to our snare pattern we'll copy it 
and I will just take this and we'll keep it at the same volume here actually what we'll do is we'll just lower the velocity here by a lot so let's go here and let's just do a little scale levels and let's just bring it down Let's bring these all the way up. And let's take this and let's go back to Snappy. I think Snappy was the best. Yeah. Now let's try adding back our little reverb maybe it'll work now that we got a better snare sound but let's just try it out let's go to Now I think I like what we've got there, but the 808 is not, 808 means more. So I'm gonna add a sausage fattener to this 808 as well. And put like 7% and add like 12 to color. to mess around with the snare because I'm still not getting that sound that I want from the snare let's try let's try a different kit because I feel like you need a I feel like a regular trap snare is not going to work for this you need like a drill snare Let's just solo this snare. I think I want to layer that snare twice. I think this extra layer is actually not doing too much, so we'll take it off. And then, I like what the Panks is doing to the snare, but we still might need a sausage fattener on it at like 7%. No color though, we don't need any color. That's a lot better. Now let's try our reverb. Let's go back to little room. You know, our 10%. I feel like maybe we need like a bigger, a bigger reverb, like a, um, a hall. And I feel like I want there to be no wet really 
or just like, well, let's put it all the way up and let's just adjust the wet. There we go. I think it's like barely to where you can notice it, but it's still like making an impact. Hold on. I want to edit this 808 pattern real quick because I found something that I kind of liked. So like when we go into here. Instead of this going up here, what if we dropped it down one? And then what if we added a little slide? So let's make it a slide note. And then let's just copy it up an octave and down an octave and do something like this. Yeah, I like that. I like that slide. I don't necessarily want it to be like just straight up an octave. Like I want it to slide to something different. So I guess we could do like g and f so this would be like g and this would go down to f to match that because then it's sort of like it slides down better back into this um but i might actually want to drop this lower too So what if we went something like and then we brought these ones up to and we crawled it up again. I like, I like that. And then I like this, how it's not a slide, but then this, I think I don't want it to go up to D5 or D number five, like we had it. And I want it to slide there and then drop into that. Yeah, that's better, that's better. Only thing I think I want to change is it sounds too constant right now. So what I want to do is take this hi hat pattern. I like what it's doing, but I kind of want to make one where it doesn't necessarily do so much. So before I do anything, I want to go back to the original hi hat pattern. So when we clone it, the velocities are stayed the same. But I want to take this and I want to go to tools and I just want to randomize these velocities. So we'll keep the pan the same and just make it like slightly drastic like that. And then we'll just kind of like, so it's not always the same somewhere like in there. Just to give it a different feeling. And then now we can clone this. We'll drop this down. And then I want to kind of make more space in this pattern. And 
and then we can sort of have that as an alternate so it's just not the same all the time switches things up a bit because having just this would be repetitive yeah I think it definitely makes a difference but I think our hi-hats are sounding a bit too dry right now so I want to add some reverb to the hi-hats so let's add our oral river little rum but instead of doing little rum I think I want something that's sort of like the snare like I see I kind of wanted to have like a lot of reverb but it's still to be like small and controlled in a way like that nah I'll know when I find the right one I don't think I want to haul I think I kind of like I feel like because of the frequencies that the hi-hats are hitting at, you can't have too much, too much reverb. We might need to actually change up the hi-hat that we're using. So let's go to... We're using the mad. I think what I want to do is before adding the reverb to the hi hats, add an EQ to it and take some of these sharp, sharp highs out of here. Because I think that's what's kind of like. So I think it's the highs that I like a little more, but it's the lows of the highs that I'm not liking. So let's make this a high pass. Let's bring it over. There we go. So I think I like what we've got now. And I'm going to try to start leveling some things. And then throwing on our mastering. So let's just add our starter preset. No, let's make sure this is all the way up and then let's let's make sure we save this correctly so there we go so right now clearly there's some things that are a bit too high so what I want to kind of do is take the track down one by one and level each thing individually I kind of want when I level everything to be around negative 12 dB We're going to turn this drum bus down, just have it at 50% because it is doing a lot for the kick. So 
So I like that we got that there. Now let's go to the hi hats. We'll put it like right there. Just because we want the hi-hats to be able to stay at least a little loud. Something like that for the snares. Now let's go to the guitar. The guitar is really not that loud as it is, but I think it's also because I'm playing the notes kind of low. And I also didn't really change the velocities too much of these notes. So let's go to bring these velocities just up just a wee little bit like that. And then like these notes right here, all the small ones. I'm going to kind of randomize the levels of these. So something like that. So the chords are more a little more consistent, but these are kind of all over the place. And I think for the kick, once we master, we probably won't need a sausage fattener. So let's kind of see how it sounds without that. It's already plenty loud. And now let's let's go to the 808 and see what that's sounding like. I think what I want to do, specifically with the 808, is add an EQ and cut out some of the low lows. And sort of have it something like that's so kind of like at 60 hertz but i kind of want an 808 that has a bit more mi low mid in it just so when this one feels a little too dark yeah that feels a lot warmer now let's make sure that we know what the pitches it's SC2 so we don't have to change anything perfect let's just hear how this 808 sounds now it's also kind of effective because I brought it down to G4 so I think what we have to do is we'll keep it at C because the pitch of the 808 is at C, but then when we go into here, we'll put it to a G. So then, when we bring it back down, now we can try this one again. And we'll make it G again. And now we can sort of take down the levels. So something like that. Now let's go to our master. Let's add our mastering plugin the one that I've been using a lot lately is this this waves plugin and let's find a preset that we like
There was one that I really liked that was like for like modern mastering or something. Hmm. Yeah, modern war master. This is the kind of one that I liked. And then we can adjust, you know, as we go. So let's unmute everything. So I still think this kick is hitting incredibly hard for whatever reason. But it's not. It's because these velocities are too high. So we'll go to scale the levels and take these velocities down to like here. And then I think I want to change the kick sound. So instead of having this main, we might need to go back to the kick and give someone a high back, just a little bit of it. Let's add our sausage fattener back again. I think. I think at first it didn't sound right, but now that everything's leveled, I think I kind of need it. Why does my kick feels like it's not hitting how it should be hitting? Let's just hear the kicks in the 808s together. What if we took off this for a second? Maybe that's why. No, this still feels like more subby, but this feels better. Maybe it's because of the, the drum. So maybe I don't send the kick to that. I think instead of adding a sausage fender, what I might add to the kicks is actually a clip. I think that might do what I'm trying to do. So let's add a soft clipper. And then turn the threshold all the way up. And we can turn the post to 90. That's better. I think I kind of want like a master preset too that's not trying to do too much. Well, let's try this one.
that I like. I sort of like what this guitar is doing, but there's just some highs in here that I don't like. So, well, we're going to make this gentle 8. And I just want to taper down some of them at like 7k roll off. I still think that this kick might be better. And then what we can do is edit the preamp gain in here. So what we'll do is right here. And I think the last thing that I want to do is I'm liking everything, but I might want to change the sound of this guitar to something different. So let's try like this one. And then let's just go here and let's make it pick again. Or strum. I think I like strum the best. I just kind of want to find the right sound for the guitar that we want. I think just a radiator might not be enough. Because it's, it's doing its job. We can turn the filter down to like 23%. And I think we need to add a decapitator. I need some sort of like fuzz in the guitar just to fill up that. That I feel like there's just an empty sound. So maybe some distortion will help a little bit. I'm going to take it off punish. We're going to put it up to P. I'm going to put it on like 2 Yeah, that helped massively. I still think the hi-hats need a bit more of the wet. And I just want a different sounding hi-hat. Maybe I don't want a drill hat. Actually, let's just go into one of my trap cats. Let's, let's let's go into this 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 kit. This might be better. Now I want to kind of solo out this kick again. I think it needs more bass and less high end. I don't know. 
There's just something off about this kick, and I can't figure out what it is. We can try this one. This will also help. Does it always have something to do with the master? No, it's nothing to do with that. I think what I might need to add to the kick is a pants. So I kind of like the way this one is. I think this one has a good base to build on top of, but it might be something with the transients. So why it's not like really booming the way I want it to. So let's try like increase dynamics. Let's see what else they have. This is mainly for snares, but you can also use it for kicks too. That's a bit too much. Or maybe like... Multi-slap. I kind of like this one the best, increased dynamics. I kind of want to try that with like this one again. Or maybe this one. What if we just, and then we just like put it to a completely different one. And I think all I want to do is just drop the volume to like 50%. See, see, maybe we don't drop the volume at all. I think it's because... something like that and then I just want to find something that's gonna like really bring up the levels that's the biggest part I kind of like that but it's too much it's too much high I don't want I don't want it to be too high. Now let's try sending this back here and see how it sounds.
better. It definitely sounds better. This just sounds like it has the lowest. We've got it side chaining. It feels like for some reason on subsequent hits, it's getting kind of drowned out by the 808. What if we snap these all the way back onto grid again? That didn't really do much. I feel like this first hit is really hitting and maybe that's because the duration of these notes isn't isn't long enough. So let's just go to none and drag these out a little bit like there we go. That was the issue all along. So now I think I can go back to this, this kick again. Now let's go back. Let's take this one away again. I think I liked this one the best. But I think for this one, it emphasizes high end a bit. So we can like take down the snares. And then we go into our, go into here. Let's just change that to five. I definitely feel like it's not emphasizing the low ends enough. So I might have to throw a EQ just on at the end and just turn this down to like 160 and just boost the 90 a little bit. Now that's a bit too much. We're going to slight, just we want to slight. I still think it's going like a bit too much, so you want it like barely noticeable. Now I think for everything, I want to take it down like 5 to 10 semitones, I mean 5 to 10 um, percent. So we'll take that to 50, 75, 40. 75, 65, and then we'll bring the drum bus down to 38, just so it's not peaking. And I think what I might add at the end is just a soft clipper, and this will also help to give more snap, and we'll just leave it at that. So now it will never go past zero.
think one last thing that I want to do is we'll just take off this for now just so we can sort of get the 808 by itself and I want to add more saturation to it I feel like it's too too low end and not enough mid so let's add I think what I want to add is this one the saturation processor let's just find a preset This is kind of boosting it everywhere. Uh, I think that's that that's done a bit more and then Just putting a slight boost here in the low mids. I still think there's something I want to do to the kick. And I might not need this anymore. It's so like... I don't like how it's like, it just sounds so saturated. keep switching kicks back and forth but I'm trying to get that perfect kick sound that I want let's try that but let's let's go back here and let's just let's make everything active again. Still think the guitar could be up a bit. Let's add this back. I think in all of this though, the snare has kind of gotten lost. So I think I need I think I need to add an extra one just as another layer because this snare seems to not be really cutting through the mix the way I wanted it to so let's see how this sounds and I guess for this one oh, all we can do is I mean the volume's already maxed out we can take the velocity of these ones and then actually let's keep that maxed out but let's just find a better snare to fit with this
Yeah, we can even take this near up above 5%. Just so it brings it to the forefront of the mix. See, I still feel like this helps so much. But I think what I want to do is go to the snare. And I kind of want to... I like boosting the low mids a bit. We can take that down just a little bit and like right here. And we don't need to tape we don't need to tape down those high ends so much so you can sort of bring this up a lot smaller and now I think we can take this snare and drop it back down a little bit I think for the guitar what I want to do though is take these notes that are all the small notes and just give them a bit of space in between each note. I think that will help the guitar melody flow better. So we'll just... I don't want too much space so we'll like half step but we'll just pull it back like a half step. And then I think I want to take the chords, take these top notes too, and I want to strum the chords, but I'm not going to change the time. I just want the velocities. And I think what I want to do is copy this and then just make another pattern and add this back in again. And this one, I don't want to have go down again. I want this one to be the exact same way this one was. So we'll copy that over like so. And then we'll snap that back. So that way, when I, I want to play that one first, so you get sort of like the doom doom doom. So it's like a copy and the second one repeats. Because I've noticing when like when I'm just listening, hearing this repeat, but having it every four bars, it's kind of like too repetitive for me. So I think this is a nice small way to switch things up. So I'm still keeping it like simple and the same, but it's not so repetitive. Why does this sound a little bit off? That's why. Now it's just sound how we want it. Now we have so much, see, now I'm liking, liking this because we have a lot of headroom for the vocals to be able to come in. So what I might actually do is take the soft clipper post gain, turn it up to 85 just to get that extra small boost. And then I think we're pretty much set.
So that has been episode one of the cook up. If you guys like this and you want to see more episodes in the future, feel free to follow my socials and stay tuned for the next time.